Hello nurses and hello top notchers. Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back again for our common board questions. And for today's topic, ang pag-uusapan po natin ay ang nursing research. And alam naman natin ng na nursing research ang isa sa mga konsepto or subject na pinakakinakatakutan natin sa board exam. So ating talakayin ang mga common board questions na lumalabas sa ating nursing research. So let's begin our topic with a situation number one. Nursing research is conducted to answer a question or resolve problems on the relevance of the nursing profession. Question number one, the nurse develops the following hypothesis. Elderly women receive less aggressive treatment for terminally ill spine patients than younger women. Which variable would be considered to be the independent variable? A. Degree of treatment received. B. Age of the patient. C. Use of inpatient treatment or letter D. Type of complications being treated. So in your question number one, ang inahanap po natin dito is the independent variable of your hypothesis. Elderly women receive less aggressive treatment for terminally ill spine patients than younger women. So hinahanap po natin dito yung ating independent variable. So alin po dito yung ating independent variable? So kung maalala po natin, pag sinabi po natin independent variable, that is the cause of your study. It is the presumed cause of the study. So dito sa ating question number one, una natin tatanggalin dito yung use of inpatient treatment at saka itong ating uh, type of complication being treated. Kasi itong dalawang ito, yung ating letter C at letter D, yan po yung mga extraneous variable natin, okay? So, mga extraneous variable or mga extra variables in your case. So, hindi po sila yung ating uh, independent tsaka dependent variable. So, take note. So, pag sinabi po natin independent variable, ito po yung ating presumed cause of your study. At pag sinabi naman po natin dependent variable, that is the presumed effect of the study. So, ang ating uh, dependent variable dito ay itong letter uh, A the degree of treatment received by your patient. While your uh, letter B, that is the independent variable. So, wag nyong kakalimutan yan. Pag sinabi po natin independent variable, that is the presumed cause of the research study. So, letter B is considered as the independent variable of this hypothesis. Okay? So, the age of the patient would be the independent variable while your degree of treatment received is considered as the dependent variable. So, ang sagot natin dito sa ating question number one ay letter B. Okay? So, letter B, the age of the patient is the independent variable. Okay? Huwag niyong kakalimutan po yan. So, ang dependent ay yung ating uh, degree of treatment received while your independent variable is the age of the patient. Okay? Yung letter C at saka letter D, anong tawag natin doon? Extraneous variable. Okay? Extraneous variable or mga extra variables po yan. Then next, question number two. The following are considered qualitative research process. Except A. Sample B. Literature review C. Hypothesis or D. Data collection Okay, so sa ating question number two, it is a negative question. So ang hinahanap po natin ngayon ay yung hindi po kasali sa ating qualitative research process. So kung i-apply po natin dito ang ating test-taking strategy, makakapag-eliminate po tayo dito ng ating mga options. So, una nating tatanggalin dito itong ating uh, literature review kasi ang literature review, part po yan ng qualitative research process. So, tanggal po ang ating letter B. Then, next na tatanggalin natin is your letter D, data collection, kasi in qualitative research process, meron naman at meron naman siyang data collection. At ganun din sa ating sample. So, ang hindi po kasali sa ating qualitative research process ay itong si letter C. Kasi, hypothesis is a tool in quantitative studies. So, hindi po siya part ng ating qualitative studies. Okay? A hypothesis is the tool of quantitative studies and is only found in such studies. So, ito po yung except natin kasi sa ating quantitative studies mo lang, makikita itong hypothesis. Okay? So, letter A, letter B, and letter D are part of our qualitative nursing research process. Okay? So, let's talk about your components of qualitative process. So, number one is the literature review. 
Number two is the study design. Number three is the sample. Then number four is setting data collection or recruitment. Then number five is data collection. And number six, data analysis. Number seven, findings. And number eight is conclusion. So, dito sa ating qualitative process, wala po tayo dito makikita nga hypothesis kasi part po naman yun kasi ng quantitative studies. Okay? So, only literature review, study design, sample, setting data collection or recruitment, the data collection, data analysis, findings, and conclusions. Okay? So, ito po ang ating components of a qualitative nursing research process. Then next, question number three, which of the following is an example of a primary source in a research study? A. A textbook of medical surgical nursing. B. A doctoral dissertation that critiques all research in the area of attention deficit disorder. Or letter C. A published commentary on the findings of another study. Or letter D, a journal article about a study that used large previously unpublished databases generated. So, alin po dito yung ating primary source in a research study? A, textbook of medical surgical nursing. B, doctoral dissertation. C, a published commentary on the findings of another study. Or D, a journal article about study that used large previously unpublished database generated. Okay, so alin po dito yung ating primary source in a research study. So, if we apply our elimination technique here in your question number 3, una nating tatanggalin dito yung ating option letter C. A published commentary on the findings of another study. Why? Kasi the commentary is not the original source of the work. Then, yung ating letter B naman, a doctoral dissertation a doctoral dissertation that critics all research on attention deficit disorder is a review of study and not the primary source of those studies. So, mali din po siya. So, yung letter A naman natin, a textbook of medical surgical nursing is not an original source of your information. So, hindi rin po siya considered as primary source of your study. So, the correct answer here is letter D. A journal article about research using large and previously unpublished databases generated by the census is a report of an original study. So, it is considered as our primary source of the study. So, pag may primary source man sa ating choices or option A, B, C, or D, it is your letter D. Kasi A, B, C are not primary sources. Only letter D is the primary source of your research study. Okay? So, letter D is the correct answer for question number 3. Then next, for question number 4, what is the best source to use when conducting a level 1 systematic meta-analysis of the literature? A. An electronic database and doctoral dissertations. B. An electronic database C. Doctoral dissertations D. The Cochrane Statistical Methods Okay? So, ang hinahanap po natin sa ating number 4 is the best source So, alin dito ang best source natin? So, mapapansin natin yung letter B at saka letter C ay umbrella technique sa letter A So, ibig sabihin po niyan wala po sa kanilang tatlo ang tamang sagot. So, since mali na ang ating letter A, letter B, and letter C, the correct answer here in question number 4 is your letter D, the Cochrane Statistical Methods. So, always remember that rigorous systematic reviews have already been conducted by the Cochrane Group in many areas. Because a systematic review is different than other types of literature reviews, and must adhere to a strict scientific design. So, itong electronic database, it may not be the most efficient tool to be used. Also, a systematic review is a meta-review of all relevant primary or original studies to provide the best available objective evidence on the topic. 
So although doctoral dissertations are included in such a review, this is not the best answer. So pinaka the best answer natin is yung Cochrane studies. Why? Because rigorous systematic reviews have already been conducted by your Cochrane group. So, the best source to use when conducting a level 1 or systematic meta-analysis of literature is no other than your Cochrane statistical methods. So, letter D is the correct answer for question number 4. Then next, for question number 5, which type of research allows researchers to be neutral observers? A. Quantitative research B. Ethnographic research C. Case Studies or Letter D. Qualitative Research So, hinanap po natin dito yung researcher daw ay neutral observers So, dito sa ating question number 5, napaka-obvious po ng ating sagot Okay? So, if the researchers are neutral observers, it refers to your quantitative type of research Okay? So, quantitative research is the correct answer here. So, letter A is the correct answer. Why? Kasi in quantitative research, researchers must remain neutral. So, in quantitative research, it is a research strategy that focuses on quantifying the collection and analysis of data. So, in quantitative research, it is in a form of deductive approach or reasoning. Researchers are never considered neutral in qualitative research, ethnographic research, and your case studies. So, never po silang naging neutral sa qualitative, ethnographic, and case studies. So, only in quantitative research that researchers remains neutral. So, the correct answer here is letter A, quantitative research. Then next, situation number two. Research is a vital endeavor nurses must engage into in order to contribute to nursing science. Then next, question number 6. When the nurse researcher collects data at more than one point over an extended period, which design is applied? A. Cross-sectional B. Time-related C. Time-sequence or letter D. Longitudinal Okay, so number 6. Ang keyword po natin dito is collects data at more than one point over an extended period. Okay? So, yun yung keyword natin. It collects data at more than one point over an extended period. So, isa-isayin natin sila. So, if we say cross-sectional design, it involves the collection of data at one time period. Okay? One time period po siya. Minsanan po yung collection of data. Hindi katulad kay longitudinal design, it involved data collection at two or more times over an extended period. So, yun yung keyword natin. Longitudinal studies involve taking multiple measures over an extended period of time. So, yun po yung ating hinahanap sa ating question. Okay? So, in a time series design naman, Outcome data are collected over a period of time before and after the intervention and usually for a single group. While in crossover designs, people are exposed to more than one experimental condition in random order and serve as their own controls. So, kung ang hinahanap natin is a research design that involves data collection at two or more times over an extended period of time, that is your longitudinal design, okay? So, the correct answer here is letter D, longitudinal design. Kasi, in longitudinal design, researchers collect data at more than one point over an extended period. Yun yung keyword natin, extended period, and it uses more than one point in collection of data. The next question number 7, if a research study involves an intervention and blinding, which research design is being referred to? A. Non-descriptive B. Phenomenological C. Experimental or D. Descriptive So, among which of these research study involves intervention and blinding? 
So, if we say blinding, blinding is also known as the masking, okay? So, it is an experimental design that keeps participants from knowing whether a participant is in the active intervention group or the control group. So, possible only when all participants are assigned to similar exposures. So, always remember that in blinding, it involves concealing information from participants and research staff to enhance objectivity and minimize the risk of bias. Okay? So, iniiwasan po niya dito yung bias. So, blinding is facilitated by the use of placebo treatments or sham procedure. So, dito meron tayong mga three levels of blinding. We have a single blinding, double blinding, and the triple blinding. Okay? So, in a single blind study, the participant doesn't know if they are in the control group or experimental group. However, the researcher and the experiment organizer knows. Okay? So, ang dilan nakakaalam ay yung subjects natin or yung ating participants. So, wala po silang kaalam-alam kung saan po sila kabilang. Kung sa control group ba sila or sa experimental group. So, that is the single blind study. And if we say double blind study, only the experiment organizers knows who received the treatment. The participants and the researchers don't know. Okay? So, ibig pong sabihin yan, kaya siya tinawag na double blind kasi investigators are blinded. So, hindi po nila alam kung sino ang control group at saka experimental group sa mga participants natin or sa ating mga subjects. Okay? Then, in triple blind study, not only are the treatment and research approaches kept a secret from the subjects and investigators, but the analysis are completed in a manner that is removed from the investigators. Okay? So, triple blind is analysis. Okay, liting ko, sa single blinding, subjects ang keyword natin, sa double blind naman, investigators, o yung ating uh, experiment organizer, and sa ating triple blind naman, it is your analysis. Yun yung blinded doon. Okay? Okay, the next question number 8. Which of the following statements is least descriptive of a qualitative research design? A. Researchers become involved. B. Gather data from one collection strategy. C. It is flexible and elastic. Or letter D. Strives for an understanding of the whole strategy. So, list po ang tinatanong dito. Ibig sabihin niyan, kumpara sa ibang tanong, it is except or not a description of qualitative research design. Okay? So, hindi po siya description ng ating qualitative research design. So, kung magtatanggal po tayo dito, obvious na tatanggalin natin dito yung letter A. Researchers become involved. Kasi, always remember in qualitative research, the researchers become involved. Okay? So, yun yung ating tatandaan. So, letter A is eliminated in question number 8. So, sa ating number 8, tanggal din dito yung letter C kasi qualitative research is a flexible and elastic. And also with letter D, it strives for an understanding of the whole strategy. So, it strives for understanding of the whole strategy. So, ang sagot natin sa ating question number 8 is letter B. It gathers data from one collection strategy. Yun yung keyword natin. From one collection lang daw yung ating uh, pinagkukunan ng data. So, letter B is the least description of your qualitative research design. So, here are the characteristics of qualitative research design. Number one, emergent design or design as they do. So, it is flexible, elastic, and capable of adjustment during data collection. So, kaya po niya nga mag-adjust during data collection. So, flexible po siya or elastic. So, number two, intense researcher involvement. So, meron pong involvement dito yung ating researchers. So, often for lengthy periods. Number three, ongoing analysis guiding design decisions. And number four, holistic po siya. Striving to understand of the whole strategy. And number five, Merging of various data collection strategies described as the bricolage. So, number six, 
use of mixed methodologies, and number seven, underlying logic is inductive reasoning. So, tandaan nyo din po itong ating number seven kasi lumalabas din po ito sa actual board exam. So, in qualitative research design, the logic here is inductive. So, it uses inductive reasoning. Okay? Inductive reasoning. So, sa ating uh, quantitative research design naman kasi, it is a research design that uses your deductive reasoning. Again, qualitative research is inductive reasoning while your quantitative research is a deductive reasoning. So, lumalabas din po yun sa board exam. Then next, for question number 9, Qualitative researchers should choose their participants who can best meet the objectives of the study. Who of the following best qualifies? A. Cooperative persons in the community. B. Those readily available thus convenient for the researcher. C. Able to articulate and reflect on the phenomenon that they experience or letter D. Persons referred by friends. Okay, so qualitative research po ang ating pinag-uusapan dito. So among which of the following will best qualify? So kung titingnan natin tong option letter B, those readily available thus convenient for the researcher. So from the word convenient for the researcher, this is a convenient sampling. And convenient sampling is a non-probability sampling or it is called as the accidental so, accidental sampling po ito. So, samples are whoever is available. Kung sino na yung nakasalubong mo, yun na yung ating gagawin na sample dito. So, that is a non-probable sampling or non-probability sampling method. So, yung letter din naman, persons referred by friends. Okay, by referral naman po ito. So, itong letter D natin, this is the snowball sampling. So, it's noble sampling selection of additional respondents. So, pag sinabi po natin nga, uh, it's noble sampling, it is based on referrals from the initial respondents or referrals from friends of friends. Okay, so again, so yung letter D natin, that is the noble sampling. So, hindi po siya qualified dito sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, pinipiling participants who can best meet the objective of the study. So, ang sagot natin dito is your letter uh, letter C. Able to articulate and reflect on the phenomenon that they experience. Because in qualitative research, it has the ability to bring phenomena to life. Okay? And your letter C reflects to your phenomenology or phenomenological study in your qualitative research. So, the correct answer here is letter C. Okay, able to articulate and reflect on the phenomenon that they experience. Then last, for question number 10, a full understanding in research should be understood by the nurse researcher as blank. A. Ensuring that participants are not placed at risk. B. Explaining the study including the risk and benefits. C. The right to decide voluntarily. Or letter D, not exploiting information shared by participants. So, keyword, full understanding po ang ating keyword dito. So, full understanding should be understood by the nurse as the informed consent. Kasi if we define informed consent in research, it is a norm in which Subjects based on their voluntary participation in a research project on a full understanding of the possible risk involved. So always remember, pag sinabi po nating full understanding, so it is all about your uh, voluntary participation in a research project or in a research study. So in your informed consent, subjects in a research project must be aware that their participation in the study is voluntary and that they have the freedom to withdraw from the study at any time without any unfavorable consequences. At lumabas din po yan sa actual board exam. So always remember that subjects in research 
can also withdraw anytime. Okay? So, anytime is the answer in the board exam. Doon sa lumabas na tanong dyan. Okay? So, they can withdraw at any time without any unfavorable consequences. So, balik tayo sa ating tanong. So, full understanding in research should be understood by the nurse as their voluntary participation. So, ibig sabihin yan, there is no intimidation, there is no force, and there is no coercion for that person to participate in such research project or research study. So, that is your informed consent. Okay? So, voluntary participation with a full understanding of the possible risk involved. So, that is your informed consent. So, the correct answer here is letter C. The right to decide voluntarily. So, that is the full understanding in research.